What's going on guys? Matt here from Crypto Coffee. I wanted to make a video today because, I mean, as we've all seen, the, the coin that we love just doubled in price. So it's pretty awesome. Like, how can you ignore that? Uh, but I also just wanted to make a kind of an intro video about me in general and just a little bit about my, my background as it pertains to all this cryptocurrency stuff. Because um, I realized I never really did that. I just kind of started this channel one day talking about different crypto projects and eventually it you know, it kind of became about hacks only. Uh, but quite frankly, that's because it's the only thing I really care about right now. Um, if something cool and equally awesome were to come up, I would be happy to talk about that. But I mean, really, guys, it's just hacks for me right now. I mean, Bitcoin, you know, it, it's been around for 10 years. It hasn't really changed much. There's not too much to really say about it. Um, like, it's great. It's a nice store of value. I, I like that I have some and I hope it goes up in price. So I'm not saying anything bad about Bitcoin, but like in terms of where you're going to make your gains in crypto in the next uh, bull market, when we get done with all this coronavirus shit and we actually have a bull market, which we will, uh, just, you know, it takes time, man. This is a game of patience. So um, seriously, if, if that's any lesson that I've learned, it's all about patience when it comes to this stuff, because every mistake I've ever made in crypto really just happened because I wasn't patient enough uh, and I didn't. I was blinded by greed, I guess you could say, or fear, fear and greed. Uh, but anyway, just a little bit about my my background. I won't go uh, too far down the rabbit hole. I'm not going to tell you my whole life story, but um, so the whole Crypto Coffee name actually just became a, kind of a moniker for the channel, um, but it stems from a coffee store I used to run online. Uh, it's called Crypto Coffee, which I've got up on the screen here right now. And I don't really sell coffee anymore. My distributor is actually having kind of a hard time uh, due to coronavirus stuff. So it's kind of been on pause or on the back burner. Uh, quite frankly, it wasn't even doing particularly well. Uh, it, you know, business would only tend to spike up when people are interested in this stuff, which is really only like the bull markets. Um, but yeah, this was it. So I think I started this in 2017. Uh, just an online coffee shop that accepts Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and really any, ty any type of crypto. We use uh, coinpayments.net to accept anything. So got that here. And uh, we had three blends. We had Moon Fuel. It's a medium roast. Uh, we had Satoshi's Vision, which is like a play on, you know, the real Satoshi. Satoshi's Vision also kind of making fun of Bitcoin SV because uh, it's just too easy to. But that was a dark roast, and then we had uh, Proof of Beans, which was our light roast. And so, you know, I, I liked it. It was fun for me, but overall, you know, it just became not worth the overhead anymore. And so I just branched out into making a YouTube channel, and I decided just to make educational videos and hopefully semi-entertaining as well, um, just to provide some value for free, just because, you know, um, this is something I've been super interested in and following, so... You know, why not spread the knowledge that I do have that I've accumulated over the five years I've been involved in this to everybody I can. So, you know, you can learn from my mistakes. You can learn the patterns I've seen in crypto and all that kind of stuff. So, so yeah, this was 2017. Um, we keep going down. I would sell other stuff too, like drop ship from Amazon and tried that. So we, we had stickers. We had different, you know, Bitcoin merchandise, coffee merchandise mailing list, affiliate program, everything like that. It was all fair trade, all organic, but um, unfortunately you can't buy coffee right now from me. Uh, my distributor is having issues with uh, just COVID stuff and they're not producing as much. Um, also on top of that, I just don't really care anymore. Um, I have a lot of other things to do and this channel is kind of like a job in itself. Uh, so, you know, it takes up an hour or two of time every time I have to do a video. Um, but I like it. I like this a lot more, what I'm doing now. Um, but this isn't where I started, right? So I started in 2015, got into cryptocurrency, um, basically just as I was learning about alternative investments, because um, I've always been kind of interested in things that are out of the ordinary, right? So, you know, value stocks and like, you know, I got into real estate for a while, didn't really do anything with that, but did a lot of research about all these various alternative investments because, um, well, really, I just, you know, the traditional financial system doesn't seem like a good way to get uh, gains and to really pr preserve your wealth uh, when you, I mean, there's much higher risk, higher reward type of uh, investments that 
if you're willing to have that kind of risk tolerance, I think it's a great idea. And crypto has definitely like hardened my risk tolerance over the years too. So um, also just being younger with a lot of time ahead of me. I mean, I can afford to make some financial fuck ups and still recover. So, you know, I think crypto is the opportunity of our best opportunity of our generation when it comes to the potential to create wealth for us and those around us and to really do uh, and be able to act how we want to and be as effective as we can in the world um, because hopefully money will no longer be an issue. So that was the early days. I, I came across Poloniex as I was learning. I heard about Bitcoin in 2013. Didn't really do much with it. Uh, I think I opened a Coinbase account and of course, you know, hindsight's 2020. I wish I bought way more in 2013. Um, but you know, I actually made a, an, my first account on an exchange in 2015 and really was trying to create trading strategies. Um, I experimented pretty heavily with TradingView and tried to use their, their Pine script to kind of create some kind of automated strategies, which really just did not work. Uh, there's some limitations to Pine that, I mean, and I'm not saying it's Pine script's fault, but basically whales or professionals with better API access and better order execution. Uh, will always win at this game. And so the resources that I had using TradingView and uh, their Python-like code uh, to run short scripts wasn't effective enough and it wasn't reliable enough as a way to make winning trades all the time. And so it would just leave me money. And so, if you know, the amount of money I've lost over the years and just trying different stuff out, throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks, I mean, it's definitely in the thousands of dollars. So I've done a lot of shit and, you know, some, some stuff works, some doesn't. But uh, trading and automated trading is something that I would not recommend unless you're a real professional with the real kind of uh, equipment and resources that you need, which is like really lightning fast API access and, uh, you know, not, not to get rate limited, the ability to make as many calls as you want in a short amount of time, depending on your strategy, or just, you know, uh, insider information always helps. And, uh, you know, a lot of people made a lot of money just buying ICOs in 2017, but then a lot of people lost that money um, if they weren't, if they didn't have a good strategy, right? So, um, really, 2015 saw Poloniex, dollar signs in my eyes, kept trying to catch the pump of, pump and dump of the day, because back in those days, you would just go on there and there was like, you know, random shitcoin, 30% up, and like red coin, 50% down, and so, obviously, my first thought was like, oh man, if I could just find a system to... Uh, get in at the bottom of those pumps and just sell at the top, you know, how hard could that be? Uh, turns out it's really hard. So back to the day job, you know, didn't really, uh, didn't really focus too much on that just because it wasn't reliable. Uh, 2016 came and I think I was still kind of trying that stuff out. And at that time I had started diversifying in altcoins as well because I'd started just reading white, pa yeah, white papers, just left and right. Just anything I could get my hands on, I would just read about the projects that were coming out. Because it was interesting to me that, um, that, you know, cryptocurrency was this giant revolution that was supposed to happen and change everything and decentralize and bring the power back to the people, uh, you know, and government, non-government money, basically. Um, so that was really cool. The more I learned about it, the more it appealed to my kind of, uh, anarcho capitalist kind of side, which, you know, I'm not, I don't follow any one ideology. So, I mean, a lot of you, <laughs> a lot of people online think that like, they don't understand nuance, so you can like some things from some ideologies and some things from, like for libertarianism, I like some parts of it, but not all of it. Um, same thing with anarcho-capitalism, anarchy in general. Uh, some of the ideas are good, but we do need semi-organized structures for, for governance, uh, not only when it comes to writing internet protocols, but when it comes to social behavior. We need uh, governance of some kind. Yeah, I know I keep getting off topic, but uh, so where was I? Poloniex? trading strategies turned into altcoins and trying to pick the shitcoin of the day, basically. Um, didn't work out great. Um, I, you know, actually that worked out pretty well. Like I was net positive after all that stuff, but that carried me into the 2017 mania as well, which was technically, you know, my first bubble. And <clears throat> if I had experienced one before, maybe I would have handled that, that bubble differently, but I wrote a lot of things. <laughs> Very, very high in 2017. And I remember I was at my job um, 
I do consulting, by the way, in my day job for, uh, it's like tech consulting. So we make, I'm a product consultant and we make uh, apps, websites, and, uh, you know, voice apps and whatever kind of digital technology that we get hired for. So um, I've always been interested in technology and the latest trends. Uh, and crypto is even making its way into, you know, my company now. We're, we're like starting uh, to look into a blockchain capability because everyone knows it's going to be big and, you know, we just kind of want to catch the right wave. Um, but that's also besides the point. Um, I wrote up a few altcoins, like I think Stratus was a big one that, I, you know, made like a killing on on paper. And then, you know, I was just basically trying to leverage my Bitcoin position with altcoins. And I was holding on to them, making a lot of money on a lot of them, uh, doing stupid stuff, occasionally losing money. And then the 2017 crash happened, and that around that time I had been listening to Richard Hart and uh, Tone Vase on YouTube a lot, and, you know, obviously very different people, but the Bitcoin maximalism side sounded semi-appealing in 2017, so I really do, like, I was uh, a Bitcoin maximalist for a while after the bubble was over, because uh, luckily by following some of these people, and especially by following, like, Richard Hart, who would just give honest you know, feedback about what he was seeing in the markets and not try to hold on to that hopium and that, you know, that, that hope that just, oh, maybe it'll go back up, maybe it'll go back up. He was realistic, you know, and so I like to follow people that I could see or sense some kind of truth in. So I realized, you know, after the, the bubble started popping and all my stuff was down 50%, that a lot of the people I'd been listening to just had no idea what the fuck they were talking about. And because it really didn't take any skill, uh, you know, to to get rich and on paper rich, not in reality, but it didn't take much skill to just pick the next altcoin of the day and buy it. And, you know, next thing you know, it goes up two times. So um, I had stopped following a lot of people realizing uh, and kind of getting a slap to reality. And I'm really happy that I had that slap to reality because. You know, I was following people like Cliff High and just these nonsense people that when you look back on it, it's like we were obviously blinded by by greed to even be listening to some of these crazy people that would just like make shit up and be like, oh, yeah, I, I know for a fact that this coin is going to go to a million bucks and whatever. So, you know, it made me a lot more. It forced me to really do some critical thinking because um, my my interest in the. uh I guess my, my interest in money brought me in, my interest in getting rich, quite frankly. And that turned into my interest in, in technology. So there was a handoff from my interest in getting rich to my interest in technology, um, which led me into just the altcoin mania. Um, but it also clouded my judgment um, because I couldn't admit to myself. And I always had this, this feeling in the back of my mind that, you know, what is the real use case for these altcoins? And... I mean, the, I always kind of knew in my like heart, I guess, that like a lot of these coins didn't have a use and nobody was using them. And like a lot of them weren't necessary if you could just use Ethereum or Bitcoin for the same thing. And so I always kind of knew that. But again, greed cl clouded my judgment. And it was people like the Bitcoin maximalists that actually helped me to sell uh, in 2017 before getting completely wrecked. So all that means is instead of losing like 90% of my stack, I lost like 70% of everything I owned, you know? So it was like, uh, you know, mentally, I, I thought I would have a tougher time with it. It really wasn't that hard mentally, but it was like a slap to reality that forced me again to think critically about my decisions and think for myself. Uh, and that's what I want to try to portray to you guys too. I'm not ever telling you guys what to do, uh, just telling you how I see the state of the crypto ecosystem and the state of the world sometimes. So take it for what it's worth, but always think for yourself. Um, so again, I'm, I like to say I'm a recovering Bitcoin maximalist as well because um, <laughs> I went through stages, right? So trading, altcoins, and then I went to Bitcoin maximalism because it seemed really appealing at the time to tell the narrative of, oh, damn it, if I would have just bought and held Bitcoin that whole time and not messed around with these altcoins, I would have been so much better. And maybe that's kind of true, but it's also just a way, I mean, I think a lot of people get sucked into believing that Bitcoin is the only thing because they've been wrecked by altcoins or because they just can't think about, and they're, the, the problem is they're 99% right. Like 
most of these other cryptocurrencies aren't worth anything and they don't have a purpose. Um, but then there's, you know, a lot of people think Bitcoin maximalism is like the final step of your journey. It's like you're officially woke when you become a Bitcoin maximalist. And so, you know, that's kind of like what I thought too. I was like, oh, Bitcoin maximalism is clearly the way. Um, you know, this is on the way down of 2017, right? So everyone's losing money. So the conservative thing looked like the more appealing thing. Now, in reality, like if I'm really being honest with myself, and this is where I can't agree with anybody that's a Bitcoin maximalist on anything, uh, and that Richard Hart was actually preaching about or talking about, um, and nobody else really wanted to say, is that there are other options that are good when it comes to cryptocurrency. Like Ethereum is actually pretty good. <laughs> like It's got a lot of people working on it. A lot of devs have put their eyes on Ethereum and different projects have been created out of it that account for a large percentage of the entire crypto ecosystem. So, you know, it'd be like thinking that Windows 95 was like the only the only uh, operating system ever, you know, and that we could never have anything better than Windows 95. So while 99% of things in crypto are shit, I don't, I can't agree with the Bitcoin maximalists anymore because I have to agree, I have to agree with myself that there are like, you know, two to maybe 10 other things out in crypto that are interesting. And so you have to keep an open mind is what I've learned because while most things that come in front of your eyes are going to be total garbage, you have to treat everyone that you uh, come in contact with, with some actual thought and say, is this really a good idea? Because once in a while, there'll be something that you might not want to miss. And, you know, Richard made that point that like, if you didn't get, if you didn't buy Ethereum at the ICO, you missed out on something that went up 10,000 times in uh, 2017 and is still up a huge multiple from the ICO price, which was like 30 cents or something. So there are things that you can buy and it's, it really is kind of about getting in early with some of this stuff. Um, but the problem is most stuff uh, will crash and actually die eventually. But I mean, look around you as well. So um, certain coins that really do have no, arguably no, no uh, use, things like Dogecoin and things like uh, anything in the top 50 that, you know, has questionable, like you don't even know if it really works or not, uh, could be hacked and all that stuff. It's shocking to me that those things even do have value. But like, just because I don't think they have value, well, apparently I'm wrong because the market has spoken and the market has given these things like Dogecoin, which is was made as a joke, uh, people the markets have given them a value of like a hundred million market cap or something. So, you know, you have to admit that just because it doesn't make sense logically, uh, people aren't going to emotionally buy these things. But anyway, that was where I kind of came to. So at the bottom of 2018, I realized that like there are certain opportunities that will happen in crypto. And they'll pop up. And, you know, maybe in the future, there's going to be other opportunities similar to crypto, but, you know, investment wise that aren't crypto. But uh, to think and to be a maximalist on anything just means you're shutting yourself off. You're just closing your eyes and pretending that nothing else is happening and that no other innovation is out there. So sticking your head in the sand is really no way to uh, to go about this because it's just not fun, right? Like it's not nearly as interesting if you're just following Bitcoin every day. Um, and you might miss out on some great opportunities as well. So really at this point, you know, it taught me how to think, think critically. And Richard Hart also prompted like the inner actual smart side of me, <laughs> like to, to think a little bit more. And, you know, I consider myself semi intelligent, but I know like, you know, being in crypto, especially and being in the tech industry, like there are bubbles and pockets of people that are 10 times as smart as I am. And so it's really important to realize like, where you stand in terms of what you can understand and what you have the potential to understand. And then to vet other people when you're getting your information to make sure that they really understand what they're talking about too. So it all really starts with asking the right questions. And um, at this point, I don't blindly follow anybody anymore. Uh, Richard Hart, somebody I follow uh, probably closer than anyone else at this point. And it's good to hear from people like Trace Mayer and Andreas Antonopoulos because they really have their finger on the pulse of what's happening. But you should take everything anyone says with a grain of salt and try to think for yourself if whether or not what they're saying is true. So just because someone on the internet is saying it, it doesn't mean it's true, right? I'll try to be as honest with you as I can be, but 
I'm not saying I'll be right about everything either, but uh, I am at the point where I guess at this stage in my crypto career, um, I can spot a lot of bullshit and I can tell what projects are actually interesting. So Hex is that to me. Um, and that's kind of my background as it pertains to crypto. I hope that was uh, semi-useful. Um, Hex doubled in price today, guys. They had like a 98% move or something like that on this giant green candle, which is where we're looking right now on the screen. And it's creating, a, you can see a bull flag, and it's just been bull flag after bull flag. When it, If you want to do technical analysis, which I don't know uh, if that even works on a coin this young, but it's only been out for 138 days, and it's already like uh, done at 25x compared to Bitcoin. So how could I not make a video about this? It's our favorite topic. It's like the only cool thing going on right now, in my opinion. Uh, apparently, you know, to get to this point, when coins are this young, it doesn't take a whole lot of financial economic energy to really boost the price. And the way that Hex is on the uh, on Uniswap, when it's got liquidity pools on both sides, it also makes it harder to sell the price down. On top of that, the obvious like staking functionality, which when you stake your coins, it takes them out of circulation and that makes it harder to uh, uh, drop the price as well. But yeah, a, some really rich whale with like 12 million bucks was able to double the price in like a single order. And you can even see, uh, I think Hexologist showed it on his video today. Uh, he staked it for like two years, or three years, five years, and 10 years. So that's somebody that genuinely believes in Hex and is staking their hex just like a CD, like with a three-year term, a five-year term, and a 10-year. Uh, so, man, my hair is getting long. <laughs> I just caught a look at myself in the uh, the video camera. I kind of like it. I think I'm going to let the hair grow out. That's uh, what else are you going to do in quarantine? Experiment with new hairstyles, right? But, uh, yeah, hex doing great. I mean, this is just so incredible. It feels good to be in at the uh, ground floor, and, you know, there's still... We're only at one millionth of a, sorry, one thousandth of a dollar. I was, yeah, of a dollar. So, I mean, even to get to one cent or ten cents would still be a 10x or a 100x. So, uh, so much potential in this thing. It's awesome. Uh, we'll do a quick ad campaign update because I know you all donated to it. So I want to tell you where your money's going and how we're doing. All right. So here we got the homepage. We got almost 900,000 impressions and almost 12,000 views. Average cost per view is 3 cents, a view rate of 1.31%. It's doing great, guys. I, I, this is really fun for me, actually. And, and it's, you know, thanks for our, everyone that donated. I did donate some myself, but we wouldn't have the potential to do a campaign this big if it wasn't for all you guys out there. So uh, thank you. And, you know, we, we've, uh, we're coming up at about halfway through the month. So 120 bucks has gone into each of these campaigns. And we're doing 200 a month again in parallel, so like 600 bucks a month should keep us going for a while, uh, at least until the adoption amplifier is over. So really, uh, really fun stuff. And hey, I don't want to take credit for the uh, big price rise or anything, but I'm sure it helped. You know, I'm sure the exposure on, on YouTube helped. You know, I've had people chat me and send images that they've actually seen the ads on YouTube when they're going around just searching for stuff. So uh, really cool. And again, three... Uh, big three campaigns going simultaneously in parallel. Um, we talked details about it in like the Hex Pro channel, but uh, placements. So where are these videos coming from? And we're organizing it by view rate because I think view rate is the most valuable statistic. Uh, it basically tells you where you're getting the most bang for your buck because something could have, you know, a thousand views on it, but if that's coming out of a million impressions, to a really shitty view rate, right? So you want the most views for the least impressions. So that's how I'm kind of ranking these channels. And it's interesting, you know, a lot of the crypto channels are too shitty and small, like my own, uh, to even uh, be eligible for advertising. And they just don't really get enough views uh, and eyeballs to be worth it. So we've been refining this uh, over time. And it just keeps getting better and better because we're looking at, you know, the view rate and organizing by that and we go to the I've been going to the very bottom and just cleaning up the list experimenting with new people cleaning up the list and iterating on that basically like two or three times now so I always delete the ones that have been getting a zero percent view rate which is you know a few you know more than you might think right 
but I might even start deleting some that are have like a 0.3% view rate or anything under like 0.5 or something like that. Um, but I do want to make sure we keep a lot of channels on here just so we have a lot of variety. And, um, you know, it turns out like the other genres, uh, like the make money online genres, people like, you know, Eric Weinstein or Lex Friedman, you know, some of these like just really intellectual type channels um, are getting a lot of views as well. Dan, Dan Vass is number one. I, I don't know who that is. Um, I, yeah, I've really just been, you know, exploring different channels on my own and taking recommendations too. So if anybody has a recommendation, I'll go look them up. And if they meet the criteria of a channel that's good enough for the campaign, we'll add them right in. It's not that hard at all. So that's how we're doing, guys. And we're getting over 600, almost 700 views a day. So 700 new potential buyers of hacks coming in per day. Um, and I, I love that. It's really due to the hex design, but I'm sure this uh, is pumping our bags a little bit as well. So, uh, so that's a little bit about what's going on with the campaign. Hex is number 38 right now in all cryptocurrencies after it's only been out for like four or five months. Uh, it's already got almost a 200 million market cap and people's average stake length is 4.5 years. So that's really good. I mean, that's the global average weighted by, uh, by quantity, I believe, just weighted by bigger stakes get more impact. Um, four and a half years is the average amount of time that people are willing to lock up their hex to get interest on it. <laughs> Look at this number, 88% up. That is just ridiculous. I haven't seen anything like that um, lately that's not a complete, you know, scam or pump and dump. Um, the thing, the thing about this 90% move is it's on a lot of volume. Like, it's on a few hundred thousand dollars worth of volume. And it's not coming down. Like, it's, it's just a pump with no dump. Uh, that's not to say it, it's never going to come down, okay? I don't know what the price is going to do, and neither do you. Not financial advice, blah, blah, blah. But, man, it's, uh, it's, it's an awesome site. So... Um, what else? A little bit more about me. I, you know, I have an engineering degree uh, in systems engineering, and you know, in hindsight, you know, I probably learned more in the quote-unquote real world than I ever learned at college. Um, you know, and I'm not saying it was a rip-off. I definitely learned some like social skills and all that stuff that I wouldn't have, you know, been exposed to maybe if I didn't go. But uh, you know, engineering degree, working in tech now. Um, obviously, crypto just fits right into that with. Um, my job and also just with, you know, my, my interests in obviously making money and in, in emerging technology as well. So I also do feel like, you know, I'm not, you know, they, I'm not always the smartest guy in the room, uh, but I do feel like, you know, I, I tend to lean a little bit more so than average. And maybe it's just because I'm comparing myself to other crypto YouTubers who sometimes don't seem to have any clue what's going on. Um, but yeah, so maybe that bar is not too high, uh, but I, I feel like I'm past that bar to some degree. Uh, but also, I, I think that my level of openness uh, to new ideas has been able to uh, really clear my head and allow me to think, just to think more critically about, you know, what I'm buying. And as always, I'm prepared to be wrong. You know, I'm never saying, like, anything can happen. And so I'm not so confident that I'm just walking around telling you what to do with your money and all that stuff, but, you know, this is all just a game. It's a fun game, and we do the best we can. Um, so, yeah, you know, other interests I have are, like, uh, I've always been interested in emerging technology, uh, music, really into music. Um, been starting to mess around in Ableton Studio a little bit. Um, really interested in, like, philosophy and, like, you know, historical, evolutionary history, that kind of thing. I uh, just love learning about people and, you know, how we came to exist in the world. Uh, yeah, really like, uh, you know, comedy. Uh, big fan of the Joe Rogan podcast. I know, so cliche, right? So is every guy my age. But, um, you know, I, I like computers. I like just typical nerdy dude stuff. Um, so, you know, just wanted to give a little intro to really who I am. Uh, again, I, I never really did that. Uh, look forward to me and Hexologists and RG3 and Litecoin Moses tomorrow. We got a podcast coming out. We're going to probably do it every Sunday, just a quick hour or two, uh, Sunday evening. So get ready for that. Um, 
Sunday evening in the U.S. Not worldwide, but hopefully you'll listen to it from all over the world. Uh, again, click my referral link below if you want to go get some hacks and you want to earn 10% more. Click my referral link there. Um, or if you just want to learn more about it, the links are in the description. Uh, I got a lot of links down there. You should click them. And what else? If you guys have any uh, topics you ever want me to talk about, shoot me a message. Or uh, if you ever want to do a live stream, I'm happy to have you on my live stream or come hop on yours. Um, I've really been thinking it would be cool to get somebody that doesn't believe in hacks or like we got a lot of haters out there. And there's a lot of haters like on Bitcoin too in general. But if anybody wants to come on and have an actual debate, I'd, I'd be happy to do that as well. Uh, as long as we keep it civil and we talk about real points and not just made up fairy tale stuff. <laughs> um, or if you just want to hop on and talk about it doesn't have to be hex at all. Like we can just talk about crypto or you know, music, fitness, whatever you want. Like, I'm interested in all that stuff, but uh, crypto is probably the, the most interesting thing right now, especially Hex. Uh, so that's it, guys. I don't want to keep this longer than it has to be. So have a good rest of your day and uh, go buy some Hex.